this is Kate McWilliams of Unprofitable Instruments, and I'm here to talk now about sitols. Sitols are um, a plucked instrument from the Middle Ages. They were uh, popular throughout England, Germany, Spain um, from about 1200 to about 1350. They have a very unusual shape in that it's a wedge-shaped instrument with a thumb hole, very, very thick neck and a thumb hole. Um, sitols and gitterns were misnamed for much of the 20th century, so a sitol is now understood to be this thumbhole type instrument, and a gittern is understood to be a small, um, rounded body, plucked instrument, um, much like a rebec, but a plucked instrument. Um, the sitol is represented by a spectacular survival in the British Museum. It was built in the early 14th century. Um, it's made of boxwood, one piece of boxwood. The sides are all carved with um, very intricate, uh, low-relief carving. And it has a great dragon head. Um, the back is left smooth, and except for one little patch up by the shoulders that has um, detailed carving on it. This instrument, I was fortunate enough to be able to study this instrument quite a lot at the museum, um, build my first instrument as a copy of it. I've since built uh, three more, one of them a larger instrument, since the British Museum Sittal is rather petite, um, and then two more instruments that are a closer copy of it. As, as I was building those, we were able to do more work with it, including x-rays that would give us a, um, a vision inside the instrument. The British Museum of Sittal was turned into a violin in the 16th century for Queen Elizabeth, um, and so right now it appears a little bit daunting as a what in the world is this thing. Um, but through my study of it, as really the, the medieval body has had very few changes made to it, and what changes were made, we're able to sort of trace backwards and sort of reconstruct what the um, medieval body could have or the, the missing fittings, the soundboard, the fingerboard, how they would have uh, looked and functioned. So, sitol start off as one giant piece of wood. Um, the British Museum, Museum sitol is about eight inches wide in one dimension, six inches thick in another dimension. And so uh, when you start building a sitol, you start with a half log and carve away everything that's not a sitol. So it um, takes a while, but it's, uh, again, something I really enjoy doing, and it's uh, really uh, marvelous to see the, the shape um, emerge from the big chunk of wood. One thing that the, the surviving instrument does indicate is that um, the soundboard, original soundboard, was a flat piece of wood that was bent. This kind of construction survives on some of the early vials, um, it's really hard to see in carvings because it's a, it's a very subtle kind of shape. It just looks like a flat thing from the front. But there's evidence on the instrument that it was carved down in just some specific places where you would need to carve it down to accommodate the arched violin soundboard that it has right now. So my instruments have a arched soundboard. The central rows I took from uh, the Winchester choir stalls, which were, um, which are uh, one of the closest matches to the stylistic carving on the sides of the sitol. They're made in about 1310 uh, by an artisan from the East Anglia in England. One other important piece of information that the surviving instrument gives is uh, the stringing of the instrument. So it has a really narrow neck, but holes for six pegs. And if you look at the original instrument right now, it has lateral pegs as a violin and a silver uh, peg box cover, which is how we identify it with Queen Elizabeth I. Um, but on the x-rays, it shows that there are some little holes, and you can see the two of the holes in the original, but little holes that go straight back this way, and then space for four more holes in the new area that the peg box has taken over. Um, so I interpreted that as a six-stringed instrument with a narrow neck, which means you can't have six individual strings, but you can have six uh, or three pairs of courses. So these are... Um, three, three different pitches, a uh, fourth and a fifth apart from each other. Uh, this particular instrument, my case keeps on breaking a peg, so I only have five strings, but intended as a six-stringed instrument. I can give you a little demonstration of what it sounds like. Oh, and also, uh, this is a plectrum, 
So images fairly consistently show something kind of big and chunky in the hands of the player. Um, it could be a wooden plectrum such as this, it could be a bone, uh, like a, a goose wing bone, um, but this is what I've been using. <laughs> And that's a sitol piece. So the sitol um, has the trefoil on the end, which looks rather daunting. It has a thumb hole, which looks rather daunting. But when you get it in your arms, uh, it's really neat. It's easy to play. You can hold it without a strap. You can walk around. And uh, in images, it's often shown with a VL player and dancers. And so you've got a sitol player out on the street playing dance music. Um, it's really easy. It plays very percussive music. Uh, you can play melodies on it, you can play a drone, rhythmic drone accompaniment to accompany the VLs or uh, singers or whoever you're working with. And um, it's a really neat sound and a really neat instrument. If you're interested in learning more about the British Museum Sitol, um, in 2010 we put on a symposium that um, brought together scholars from uh, all over many fields and many countries. Um, to study different aspects of the sitol, whether it was uh, who built it and when and where, or whether it was where were sitols popular, or how do you play a sitol, or uh, did it really belong to Queen Elizabeth and what does it mean, and is a soundboard also a 16th century violin soundboard, which makes it one of the earliest um, in, in, in English sit, uh, violin soundboards. So um, this book also has a fabulous set of color pictures, detailed pictures of the instrument, as well as x-rays you can see inside. It's uh, printed by the British Museum, available on Amazon and other book selling places. It's also available as a free downloadable PDF from the British Museum website. Thank you!